Hey. How's it going? Can you hear me? Okay.
So we're going to do a, a song that's off this record that I just put out recently. And uh, some of you might know it. Probably most of you don't yet. But this is called Back From Cali.
This thing we do here on the on the show, where we actually have the audience come up and ask, well, they actually stand up and ask a few questions. Uh, hey, Slash, uh, mate, thank you so much. You're the reason I started playing guitar, and um, I hear you have about 100 guitars yourself, or over that. And um, I just it's about 96 more than I do. And um, I just wondered, do you have a favourite guitar, and is there a story behind why that guitar is your favourite guitar? I can actually answer that. Um, yeah, the. I have a guitar that I got in 1986, which was a Les Paul that was handmade by this guy named Chris Derrick. And uh, it was back when Gibson didn't make reissues. And it was a 59 handmade, what would be considered a reissue, except for it wasn't made by Gibson. And I got it, and I did Appetite for Destruction with it. And it's been my, it's been my main recording guitar ever since, and I just did this last record with it. And now we actually have Gibson's put out uh, a model of it. It's like identical with all the same hardware and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably my most special guitar. Now I have one other Les Paul, which is a 1988 Les Paul standard that I've had out with me since God knows when, since 88. So those are the two main ones. Thanks. Thanks. I play a Les Paul too. Good yeah, guitar. They're, they're all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, your hat is like a signature piece. Um, have you only had like any crazy fans try and steal them in the past? I, well, I didn't have a, it wasn't like a crazy fan, but uh, I had I had it stolen out of a limousine one time. I'm not sure exactly, the limo driver never really fessed up, but then it ended up in the hands of some guy who tried to sell it like on eBay or something. And so I caught the guy. Awesome. <laughs> this is the hat, actually. That's 
Thank you. Um, you've inspired so many people to pick up the guitar, myself included. Um, back in the day, who inspired you to pick up the guitar and do what you do? It was uh, the, the thing that really made me pick up the guitar at that particular moment was was Joe Perry and Brad Whitford. That was like the that this record called Rocks was like the driving force behind me going, I'm going to do this. <laughs> And then it was all the great guys, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Andrew. I could go on for days. Hi, Slash. Hi. Uh, this question is actually from Miles. Um, obviously, we all think Slash is the coolest guy around. So what, what do you think is the coolest thing about hanging out with Slash? <laughs> He's Slash. I mean, what else can you say? Now, you know what? Actually, this is a new thing. Slash... Um, He's real good at turning me on to good books. <laughs> Believe it or not. I hate to disappoint y'all, but he's, he's, he's definitely a well-read fellow. And yeah, so, so we have Slash's Book of the Month Club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Wow. <laughs> I, wish it could, I wish I could say it was something you know, more like, you know some sort of party thing but it's, it's all about books <laughs> how, Miles how, how do you cope you know there's one thing because I know as a singer when you need to get right up there for you know some screaming there you need to get the volume does it change when you're in an acoustic setting tell me about that oh yeah it's a, it's a challenge yeah because right? I don't want to be like wah you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's painful. So, um, yeah, it definitely have to, it's a totally different animal. You kind of have to tone it down or else it's like you come across singing like a tool. G'day, Slash. Massive fan. Thanks for coming out for us tonight. Um, do you feel that the, um, the Guns N' Roses legacy has overshadowed your solo career in any way? Do you have fond memories of um, the, the Appetite for Destruction days? Um, no. I mean, yeah, that I do. I, I, as far as Guns the only reason Guns N' Roses was ever a pain in the ass since I left the band was uh, just the constant sort of barrage of questions about reunions and about mostly because everybody's looking for negative information having to do with Axel or whatever. That's a pain in the ass. But the legacy itself, I'm fucking proud to death of. Was, when, so you should be. Yeah. When I, when I, was, when I was a kid, uh, you know, and we all, you always knew like cool people, they always had the coolest records, right? You sort of get the barometer for if somebody was cool is if they had like a series of fucking records that were like, oh, this guy's got his shit together. And we, Guns N' Roses put out a record that became one of those albums. I'm very, very proud of that. Like you're pretty like, you're a very, very respected musician. And, um, I mean, you've had so many things happen to you in your career, obviously. You know, I mean, you've got amps named after you and whatnot. But um, what's one of, like, your highlights? Um, it's a series of highlights, you know. But then it followed by the opposite, you know. It's sort of an up and down kind of a thing. So I could name, like, being here right now is actually really a highlight. This is very cool. But, uh, being on tour right now and having the record do really well and having Miles and having the whole band be really great and then that's a highlight and then you know because that's the kind of shit that turns me on right so that I've been doing this for since I was 19 so it's a series of highlights but then lots of major major disappointments along the way as well so anyway yeah it's all good all right. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about Miles, because for Australian audiences who don't have the luxury of seeing all the different bands Miles has been in. Well, I mean, he's from a band called Alter Bridge, to, um, which is a, a band <laughs> that he's in. And then I, I uh, seems like I was the, one of the last guys on the block to actually know who he was. Mm. And uh, a couple guys in my band, Velvet Revolver, knew who he was, and obviously Led Zeppelin knew who he was, because they tried to get him to fill in for Robert Plant at one point. Mm. So I, you know, I was like, who is this guy? You know, and I, I looked him up on YouTube, and I saw him in Alter Bridge, and he was in that band. We were trying to get him out of his band and into Velvet Revolver at the time. <laughs> anyway, a couple years go by, and I, I uh, needed somebody to sing these two songs that I had for my record, but I couldn't think who to sing on these particular tracks and the whole rest of the record was done and uh, I'm running all these names through my head and nobody seemed appropriate and then Miles' name popped up and I had no idea really what his singing style was and I thought well let's just see what happens and then I sent it to him 
And uh, the song, the first song, that first demo that he sent back was a song called Starlight, which we played. And I was just like, wow, you know. So I flew him out to L.A. and we recorded the song proper and we got to know each other. And he's just a really great guy. So this is a song that um, we actually wrote last year. It's the very first song we ever did together. The song's called Starlight. And we've never done this. Yeah, we've never, never attempted this. In the yeah, so fashion, we're going to so. navigate this. I don't know how well it's going to go, but we're going to do it. We're going to think positive.
This one um, was the first single off the latest record, the only first, my first solo record. Anyway, and uh, it, was, it was the first single, this is called By the Sword.
come out on the road and you're doing an acoustic set um, and you're involved... This is the first time we've ever done an acoustic set. Ever? Ever. How do you get together a set list? I just pick songs that, that uh, uh, translate on acoustic. Okay. Certain songs won't, no matter what you do to it. If they, they just don't sound right, not played at mega decibels. And certain songs sometimes are written on acoustic and then translated later into a louder kind of thing, but they still feel good on acoustic. And then some are um, ballady and lend themselves to acoustic anyways. Mm. You just sort of pick the ones that, that will work acoustically. This is one of the songs we're doing today that we uh, had to change tunings altogether or change mm -hmm. keys altogether to make it sort of fit for acoustic. And, and sometimes, you know, if you have a certain solo that, that mm -hmm. people are used to hearing, you sort of have to be able to do all that on an acoustic <laughs> guitar, which is a little bit harder. It's absolutely gorgeous to hear it on an acoustic guitar. What acoustic guitar are you playing at? I have no idea. You have no <laughs> idea? I was amazing. I mean, I should, a, it should be Australian. If I'd known you were going to ask me that, I would have asked what kind of guitar it is. It's a local, somebody local. Maiden? Let's hope it is Maiden. Yeah, let's just no, say it's Maiden. I'm positive it's Maiden Australia. I'm I just don't know who it is. That's made. great. Yeah, I'm pretty but sorry. But they're nice.
at the shoes you're filling Look at the blood we're spilling And look at the world we're killing The way we've always done before And look at the doubt followed And look at the leaders we followed And look at the lies we swallowed And I don't want to hear no more Selective annihilation of mayors and government officials For example, to create a vacuum Then we fill that vacuum As popular war advances and pieces closer Thank you. All right. If you ever hear that on acoustic anywhere else, you know that we did it first here. Um, I guess this is our last, last song. <coughs> we'll make it a good one. You think? Okay.
Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another round of applause because that was just...